<laughs> Hi everybody, here we are again. I need a pint of Woodford's Wherry. Nice, but we're not here to talk about that. Here to talk about polypins. More commonly known as pressure barrels. They come in different shapes and sizes. The main ones that I use are a king keg. I'll post a picture. This, I think, is a roto keg. I'm not sure. There's no marking on it. And I got it second hand. Mate at work, he was getting rid of his stuff. I had to move houses and he, he didn't have room for it anymore. So I acquired quite a bit of stuff, which was very good of him. Didn't tell him to charge me out. It was, it was cheaper to bring it into work than it was to take it to tip. Because he was coming to work anyway. Stop more from Anyway. So they come in two different types what's called a bottom takeoff when the tap is down there and a top takeoff when the tap is up here or there. This is more of a, a mid takeoff, it's the, the tap is lower than usual but the advantage is bottom takeoff you don't need as much gas because you're dispensing from the bottom of the, of the barrel and it will just come straight out and you can even if you want just slacken the, the cap and allow air in and allow gravity to dispense your beer not a good idea it means your, your beer gets oxidised a bit like standard cast beer at a pub if the pub doesn't have turnover, the beer goes off. Stop sidetracking. Right, anyway, so the advantage of a top takeoff, first of all, you can get your glass under it. So if you've got a bottom takeoff, you've got to put it on a shelf overhanging or raise it up on bricks, whatever. Top take off, straight under the tap. The second advantage of a top take off, it clears a hell of a lot faster. You can make a bottom take off into a top take off just by adding one of the float valves because a, a top take off, if the, if the tap's up here, when the get, beer gets below that, You've got to have a way of the beer siphoning up and what they do is they have a float valve. This is an old one, this is what they used to be like, weren't particularly that good to be honest. It was a plastic with something very similar to that but not the same that used to go in the top. It broke, I had to change it and the piece of flexible tubing or not very flexible tubing that goes onto the back of the tap floats up to the top of your beer follows your beer down so your beer only has to clear a little bit at the top and then you can start drinking it I find without findings that means at least three weeks in the barrel, at least. More like four, preferably five. With, for, that's for a bottom takeoff. No, that's for a top takeoff without findings. A bottom takeoff, got myself confused there, a bottom takeoff, probably looking double of that because it's got to clear all the way out the bottom before you can actually start drawing the beer off. The added advantage of a top takeoff is that as you start drawing the beer off it forces your sediment down even faster because there's science in there and it's 
the weight of the beer above it, or sorry, the lack of the weight of the beer above it, above the sediment, means the sediment sinks faster, if you, if you understand. You take off a pint, the stuff above is lighter, the sediment is heavier, sinks down a pint. It's science. Anyway, so that's, that's how they used to be. But all right, tended to work. Often got a little bit stuck. Certainly towards the end, it ended up turning and was dragging sediment in. Not perfect. What they then came up with, very similar, so um, that goes into the back of your tap. They're all the same, the taps are all the same, they have that sort of fitting in. Whichever takeoff you've got. So that fastens in the back of your tap. Your float now, now turns. It's got a bowl which is more substantial than the old plastic bit because the old plastic bit break. It used to break on a regular basis. You just have to change your your belt, your your tank off. These don't break. I've not had one break on me yet. I've been using them for several years. What I do say, what I would say is, the pipe is still not really that flexible. Find yourself somewhere that you can get silicon tubing. Silicon tubing is far more, far more flexible. Get the right size, fits on, no problem. What we mainly need to talk about is the valves. I bought some new valves recently. This is the old style. You used to have a, an inlet valve of which I have only got SO2 fittings because I have SO2 carbon dioxide cylinder. Sorry, not SO2, S30. Why am I thinking of S SO2? Anyway, so it's got a screw on the outside. You get others, and it's just got a hole in the middle. You get another one that's a pin for the small bulbs. It's worth investing in one of these. They're to buy a new full one, they're about 27 quid. To buy um, a refill, it's seven quid, you send your cylinder back, you take the cylinder back, and you get your gas for seven quid. The small little bulbs seem like a good option, but unfortunately, when you put those on, if you haven't got much CO2 after fermentation, and your beer is up here, you'll lose most of the gas from your bulb, because it'll fire in, and then it'll get fired out by the pressure release valve. This is how they used to be, it used to be a, pre a gas in, pressure release. They changed, they used to have aluminium ones as well. Now you can still get aluminium ones of these, but these are a gas in and pressure release. So you get screws on just the same. It comes out through the centre bit, but then there's a hole that it comes out under that the um, rubber band that's your pressure release. They come in slightly different types. I've been using those for years. They work really well. The only downside is if it goes too loose, your nut, I'll show you this, your nut is on the inside. Whereas previously, your nut was on the outside, seal, cap, nut. So, 
seal cap nut with your nut on the outside so you could just nip it up a bit. These, the new ones, seal on the outside, nut on the inside because they've got to make room for your outlet. Not best, but you generally didn't get them done, getting undone, coming undone. But I saw some of these fancy bad boys, and that is just a little bit of an innovation. The same as the old one, you've got the seal on the inside. Same as the new one, you've got the pressure release on the outside, but then you put this little ring on to allow your gas to come out, and then your nut tightens up. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be quite a good idea. I tried putting one of these on the other night, ended up giving up because I couldn't get it tight enough, I'll, I'll demonstrate it, with, even with, two water pipes. For starters, the seal that came with it seemed to be too soft and squidged out, so as you tried to get it tightened up onto the cap, the seal decided to escape. I tried to do it with a seal, not on at all. That was even worse because it just didn't seal. Another advantage to these, uh, to, the, to the new method as well, is that the inlet and outlet goes into the centre of the cap. And I don't know if you can see that, there's, it is old, there's um, dried cleaning solution on it, but the centre of the cap tends to have a bit of a pip on it, which plays havoc with your ceiling. So we might not even be able to do this, we might have to reconvene with a new cap. So it, it simples that the nut comes off, they are quite a tight fit, but it comes out, it's a, a D-shaped hole, or it should be, it's partially D-shaped hole on this one, someone's been ragging at it a bit, but, now I bought two of these, thinking, what a good idea, I'll swap them over, no. So it's quite simple, you know, and, and it's good that everything, apart from the seal, is on the outside. What I should say is, you should really assemble it all with petroleum jelly. But just for a quick demo. See what's the first time with. Right, so I've just nipped it up. What we also need to do is there's an O-ring that goes in these. I always pack the inside of the cap where the O-ring is going to go with petroleum jelly first and then the seal just sits in that, takes out any imperfections, run a quick zip of petroleum jelly around the seal, screw it on. It'll prove it wrong, innit? Greasy fingers. Of course, we 
barrel spanner doesn't fit this cap. Right, let's give it a whirl. Let's see. As well, when you're doing testing like this, fill it all the way up to top with water because then you have to squirt less gas in. So let's see if it's going to work. Right, so that's the pressure release valve going, I think. I think it's the pressure release valve on this one going. But, as you can see, it comes loose. So it either needs a second nut on there, pressure but it's not really finger tight and I did find that as you unscrewed the gas you would unscrewed the nut lose all your gas dribble not good I've tried it many ways I tried tightening it up really tight and as I say it, it didn't work. It ended up this is actually better than the previous one. The previous one was just a nightmare, I just couldn't get it to seal at all. So <clears throat> when you pressurize it the high pitch whine is the pressure release valve going off. That's pressure release valve stopped now. It's still leaking. So you're losing that gas that you're putting, you're losing. Whereas the old style ones didn't used to do that. The medium style ones or mid style ones didn't used to do that. I'll just, uh, I mean, I managed to get it tightened this time, just about. Ooh. That's all you do. I mean, this spanner fits the newer caps. The newer caps don't have those four. square bit on they have ridges that fit those so I'll try and prove that I'm not yanking your chain these I just cannot get sealed so not recommending them at all I might try This is the old original one. I'll just quickly. I don't know if this is going to seal at all because the seal looks a little bit poor. It's very old. Just a bit of petroleum jelly on there. Tighten it up. Fingers. 
so that's that pressure release valve coming out now. And there's no hissing, that one's sealing. And you can see, not you can see that the pressure is staying in. So the way to do it is leave it for half an hour to an hour. See if it still retains its pressure. You can spray spray a liquid, a solution round, but you can't always see it bubbling. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So yeah. Those seem like a good idea. I'll just try. I'll have to release the pressure. just try a seal on both sides just in case it may help the nuts are great I don't know As I say, it seems like a good idea, but practicality doesn't seem to really work. Just a bit of petroleum jelly. Doesn't need much. So we've got second seal. I'm also putting some petroleum jelly on. Probably didn't need to because I'm actually using it for retention purposes, shall we say. Maybe even the second seal on top of that. I don't know, we'll see. Greasy fingers. No, I don't think it's sealing. Certainly not as much pressure in there as there was. Uh, that's pressure release valve. No, pressure release valve was uh, stopped releasing and it's still hissing out. Right. Bought two of them. Probably not going to use them. Not impressed with those. Right. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Cheers. Bye. Forget it